Tonight, thousands pay their respects to our fallen soldiers at Anzac Day ceremonies across the region. And local RSLs turning to young people to keep those memories alive. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Our nation has paused today to remember those who gave their lives in defending our country. Residents across the Spencer Gulf turning out in high numbers early this morning to pay their respect to soldiers on Anzac Day. It was the first time in three years dawn services were able to host large crowds thanks to the easing of COVID restrictions. The Spencer Gulf paying their respects to those who made the ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> In Wyala, hundreds gathered at the Cenotaph at Memorial Oval for this year's dawn service. I, I, I believe they're very important for the community to come together um, to remember the sacrifice of the Australian servicemen and women. It's the first ceremony in two years, with the COVID-19 pandemic dramatically scaling back commemorations. We will remember them. We will remember them. <laughs> But with the pandemic restrictions in South Australia now scaled back, larger crowds were welcomed back with open arms. We haven't had to worry about people signing in today and making sure they had to sign in down at the Sanitaf. So for the government actually dropping these restrictions have really helped, I think, all the RSLs throughout this state. For local veterans, Anzac Day also provides much needed camaraderie among former and current diggers. Wyala Vietnam veteran Colin Davies highlighting the bonds forged during wartime and in peacetime. When I walk into this club alone, and straight away, Irish alone, and I had a melon, it was up, and he turned and says, welcome home, brother. In Tumby Bay, residents also gathered in large numbers for their dawn service by the sea. Strong winds, not even a deterrent for those who want to remember the soldiers who couldn't make it home. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The morning services that followed also saw a strong turnout, with many attendees donning a sprig of rosemary. In Port Augusta, the local RSL organised the first Anzac March since before the start of the pandemic. One foot in front of the other, the Anzac Day procession marches down Marriott Street in Port Augusta. Family, friends and those who served attending the Gladstone Square ceremony at 10.30 today to stand steadfast as one. We're not a lucky co country by chance. We're actually a lucky company because people have given their lives for us so, and we need to remember them. Local cadets are a vital part of today's proceedings, carrying out their official roles and ensuring the Australian flag was once again raised high. I'm quite glad to be in the Catafort party because like all of my brothers, including this one, have done it. Uh, the kids, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I've watched, watched them as they go over the years. With a speech from the RSL president and bagpipes ringing out over the square, the crowd then fell silent as the last post played out. I had the great privilege of uh, attending the Port Piri dawn service uh, this morning and also the fact is I'm up here for the uh, civic service coming up here. Very, very impressed with the, the crowd up here. Today's proceedings seeing a much stronger turnout compared to previous years. With the relaxing of COVID restrictions, the RSL was able to bring back many of the Anzac traditions the city is known for, including inviting community back to their club rooms for a drink and a walk through their museum. It's good to see people out and about now because of the COVID was uh, hinging on that last year. So, you know, it's a great thing to celebrate Anzac. It's good to get out just to honour those who have served. Broken Hill residents also turning out for their march. Thousands watching on in sunny conditions with many of them paying their respects later on. Edward McCarroll, Seven Spencer Gulf News. And Tumby Bay residents have gathered in numbers to also mark the day, with many locals from the township paying their respects. The local RSL club also looking to work with the town's youth to ensure their future going forward. The first light of dawn seeping through the clouds this morning as members of the Tumby Bay community gather to pay their respects. We should honour and respect those who came before us and give us what we have now. Um, and, and I said it during my speech, we have the freedoms that many countries don't have. The ceremony saw school kids from across the Air Peninsula get involved by placing a wreath at the memorial. 
It's a demographic the RSL want to engage with more, with members encouraging the next generation to get involved. If we don't cull, uh, cultivate the younger people and have them understand what the RSL is about, then we'll shut our doors because we're all getting older. But the, the key is they are the carriers of the banner. Younger veterans also being encouraged to come forward. We're all getting older, we're not getting any younger. And so if there is any younger veterans out there who wish to come along, we'll make you very welcome. Rob, praising younger generations, saying they are already showing a greater interest in the RSL's history. Young children now, especially the primary school kids, they know more about our military history and our, our national history than their parents. And I think that is fantastic going forward. The ceremony concluded with a march, with veterans then escorted by the Light Horse Brigade back to the club. Henry Millick, Seven Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, we look at the rest of the day's news. As a man dies in a fatal car crash near Port Pirie. And the Defence Force helping a Broken Hill aged care facility through their COVID outbreak. Welcome back. South Australia's road toll has risen after a man died in a crash at Warnertown yesterday afternoon. Just after 3.30, police were called to the Augusta Highway after reports a truck had come off the road and crashed into a tree. The driver and sole occupant, a 61-year-old man from Victoria, passed away at the scene. Major crash officers attended the site with the Augusta Highway closed for several hours. Meanwhile, a Port Perry man will face court after allegedly being caught driving under the influence of alcohol. At about 9.50am last Friday, the 30-year-old allegedly forced another car travelling in the opposite direction off the road, clipping the rear of the car. Police say the driver failed to stop before travelling a further 300 metres and crashing into a tree. He is scheduled to appear in the Port Perry Magistrates Court at a later date. St Anne's Nursing Home in Broken Hill has received help from members of the Australian Defence Force who arrived last week. The facility, however, has sadly recorded another COVID death, taking the toll to six. A helping hand in a time of desperate need. The Anzac spirit shining in Broken Hill, with Defence Force personnel answering the call from St Anne's Nursing Home. The nine-person team, comprising of general staff and nurses, helping the site roll out vital health care heading into winter. They're also capable of helping us roll out some of our flu vaxes and um, some more COVID boosters for our new residents that have come in that haven't had their final, their third dose yet. The deployment coming after the facility began to experience a critical staff shortage. Meanwhile, positive signs are emerging after a horror week battling the virus. A number of residents are expected to be cleared by tomorrow and provided there isn't a late spike, all will be officially out of isolation by Friday. So we're hoping that by Friday we'll have no cases of COVID in the, in the St Anne's facility and then we'll just have to stay locked down probably for at least seven more days just to ensure we're clear. But sadly, another resident has passed away with the death toll from this outbreak now standing at six. Centre management say it's a scenario they hope they could avoid. It's an extremely sad situation and it was one that we hoped as an organisation we never had to experience. St Anne's is expected to open next month. However, a date has yet to be decided. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. And Port Augusta's Edenfield aged care facilities are once again in the spotlight, weeks out from the federal election. A number of candidates for Gray say the current member isn't doing enough. However, he's defended his track record. It's a sector some locals say is in crisis. The Port Augusta community has been left in disgust by allegations an Edenfield resident's bed sore was left to develop into a serious condition. Other families also speaking out saying their loved ones were allegedly left to soil themselves whilst waiting to be taken to the toilet. As a family member of a resident in the facility for me, um, I, when I sort of found this out, it, it wasn't something that was necessarily communicated really clearly or really broadly and I can understand why Edenfield wouldn't have wanted it communicated. 
The member for Gray says the government is working to fix the facilities. While the initial infringements may cause outrage and I don't blame people for being upset, I think it's very important to understand that the system has done exactly as it should do to address those problems. But a political opponent says Mr Ramsey has let the region's elderly fall through the cracks. I just feel incredibly sad for everyone involved, um, especially those people that, that rely on, on us to look after them in their, in their later years, and, and we're all going to be there. Well, I think it's already been a, a, an absolute focus of the government. Uh, for, for the record, we've doubled the expenditure on aged care since we came to power in 2013. Doubled. Locals calling for better practices to be established. The people of Port Augusta deserve better. We deserve better from providers. You shouldn't have to leave your regional area to get quality aged care. Edenfield Family Care publicly stating that the home is engaged with an external provider and is working closely with the quality agency. Edward McCarroll, said in Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us after the break. The Monday Monday Bash goes out with a bang. And Port Lincoln footy fans turn out in force as the sandfall comes to town. South Australia's new climate change minister will ask Parliament to recognise the current global climate emergency. Susan Close will introduce the motion in Parliament, also tabling a petition with more than 10,000 signatures collected last year. She says the petition figures show South Australians are calling for immediate action to address the issue. The Monday Monday Bash wrapped up on Saturday night with a stellar final day on the plains. Performers gave patrons a memorable day with acts like Chocolate Starfish, Vika and Linda and John Williamson entertaining the masses. Monday Monday, proving to be a celebration to remember. Even after a big first few days, the crowd was still pumping on the final night of the festival. MC Mark Gable of Choir Boys fame praising them for their supportive attitude. This crowd is more unified um, for some weird reason. They all seem to be like one unit and very enthusiastic and appreciative of everything that's going on. Event organiser Greg Donovan unable to pick just the one highlight. All the great bands, you know, some rock and roll. Um, it's just the people and the atmosphere. I, I, I just can't put my finger on one highlight, you know, it's just all good. Duo Vicar and Linda Bull among those who relished performing at the event, also praising how beautiful the city was. They're encouraging others to come and experience the bash. Out here, it's just, it's, it's, it's unreal. It's like an experience that I think people should come out and experience because it's, it's something that you should have on your bucket list. Yeah. Also hoping to explore a bit before departing. Yeah, tomorrow morning. Yeah, it's just really beautiful. It's, it's, it's different. Yeah, because we're city girls, so you don't often see landscape like this. Chocolate Starfish whipped the crowd into a frenzy before John Williamson and Paul Kelly finished the show. No rest for organisers, though, as they'll have to do it all again in August. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. The sandfall came to Port Lincoln over the weekend, with Norwood defeating West Adelaide in the inaugural Teakle Cup. More than 2,000 fans attended as people flocked to the seafood capital of Australia over the weekend. People from across the Air Peninsula gathering to support some of the sandfall's locally grown talent. On neutral territory, Norwood had some vital home ground knowledge with five Air Peninsula players sporting the Red Legs jumper. I used to play the under-15s carnivals and stuff down here in Centenary when I was playing for Great Flinders um, back in my junior years and um, it's been really good. I've caught up with a heap of people from back here that I haven't seen in a while. The match a one-sided affair with the Red Legs thumping the Bloods 127 to 59. Former local Ben Jarvis having a day out, kicking a game high of four goals. The result spoiling John O'Beach's 200th game celebrations. I still enjoy my footy so um, hopefully we can uh, get back uh, into the finals because the last couple of years we've been towards the bottom of the ladder. So, But yeah, still love my footy and um, I'll keep playing until, um, until the body's done. It's the first of a number of regional sample games this year with the Crows in North Adelaide heading to Wyala during the country championships in July.
It's the first of three regional games we have this year, so which is fantastic. You know, that's the most we've had in a long time in one season, and to get Sanford Footy out into the regions is so important for the growth of our game. Both sides eager to support regional footy. I think going forward, we're looking to make it a real, a real game that we hopefully annually have. Good for the um, country towns to get around the footy, then the SNFL footy. Norwood now in the top five, whilst Westies remain winless. Henry Millick. Seven Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We take a look at the local footy scores from the weekend. And Alex Sykes will have the latest weather forecast. Hello again. Football leagues right across the Spencer Gulf got their seasons underway over the weekend. In Wyala, North and West played out a spirited game. With all the details, here's Mark Zeta. It was perfect and sunny conditions on Saturday and footballers across our region took advantage of it as they began a brand new season of football. The 2022 season started off in the Wyala Football League with West Wyala facing North Wyala at Memorial Oval. Brandon Everett leading the Dragons in goal scoring with four for the day. While Tyson Richmond did the same for North Wyala with three of his own. In the end, the Dragons got their first win of the season, 112 points to 78. In the other Saturday game, it was a grand final rematch between Central Wyala and Waruna Bay. The Roosters, starting where they left off, dominating the Tigers throughout the match in a one-sided contest. Meanwhile, the two sides that missed out on finals last year, South Wyala and Rupina, played on Sunday afternoon at Bennett Oval. The Kangaroos outmatching their opponents by 14 goals. Moving over to the Spencer Golf League, Prop Risden dominated in their match against West Augusta. Aidan Jacobs scoring six goals in his side's healthy 103-point victory. Meanwhile, Solomon Town defeated their opponent's Port by five goals. While in the Twilight match, Central Augusta and South Augusta started their season off with a draw. To the Port Lincoln Football League, and matches there were much closer affairs. Mally Park winning their match against Boston 14-10-94 to 10-7-67. In the second Saturday afternoon match, the Tasman Roosters were too good for Lincoln South. Moving over to AFL Broken Hill, and Souths came away with a victory against their opponents, Norths, 8 12 60 to 5 6 36. And finally, on the York Peninsula, CYC were too strong for Ardrossan, Pascoville narrowly defeated Butte, CMS thumped the Southern Eagles by 13 goals, and Kadena were too strong for Wallaroo. That's a look at the first football results of the year. Tune in tomorrow as we take a look at the rest of the weekend sports results. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather as we head into another working week. With all the details, here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, John. And look, rain did put a damper on today's Anzac Day commemorations with those wet conditions to continue across the Gulf tomorrow. From 3pm, Port Lincoln was 22, Port Piri reached 26 and Cooper Pedy was 19 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, Port Augusta was 26, while in Broken Hill both reached 24. Our friends in Adelaide had partly cloudy conditions, 26 there. Woodner was 21, Kadena and Cleve were 25, Clare was 23, Cooper Pedy was 19 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, thick cloud with a trough over central South Australia is bringing scattered showers, heaviest in the south. Patchy cloud in the southeast with onshore winds is bringing some showers. Cloud building in the west under high pressure is generating the odd storm. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters east to northeasterly. Winds 10 to 20 knots, seas around 1 metre and south to southwesterly swells below 1 metre. Showers across the region tomorrow, shower to in Port Lincoln and Woodna, both set to reach 22 degrees there. Cleave a degree cooler with 21. Rain forecast for Wyala where it'll get to 21. Port Augusta and Kadena both also set to reach a top of 22 degrees. Port Piri is set for 23, Clare 18 and it'll be rain in Broken Hill with a max of 16 
there. Taking a look further through the week now and those showers will have cleared by Wednesday, mostly sunny in Port Augusta and Port Pirie, both to reach 25, while at Port Lincoln and Kadena all 23 degrees. Partly cloudy across the border in Broken Hill with 21, Cooper Pedy will get to a max of 27. Warming up on Thursday with mostly sunny conditions across the region except for a possible shower in Broken Hill with 25 degrees there. Sunny and 29 in Port Pirie and Port Augusta Woodna and Kadena both to reach 26, Port Lincoln 25. To Friday now and sadly those showers will be returning. Port Pirie, Port Augusta and Woodna all 23, while at Kadena and Adelaide 21 and Port Lincoln will reach 22 degrees. So I hope you have an umbrella handy John, it's going to be a wet one and that's all the weather from me for tonight. It's back to you. Thanks for that Alex. And that's the local news this Anzac Day. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later, and we will return tomorrow night at 7pm. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.